Design iterations are a rather tedious task for architects and engineers. You have to consider performance or spatial requirements, materials, manufacturing methods and cost constraints. It's often time consuming to first attempt multiple iterations manually and then figure out the most optimum way to go about with the project. But what if computers could do this for us? What if they could present us with several permutations and combinations for solving a design problem? Today, we are going to talk about a hot topic in the architecture, engineering and construction industry right now. Generative design. It has been called the future of architecture. Professionals worldwide have adopted it and saved time, money and resources. By the end of this video, you will have a thorough understanding of this growing field, why it's so beneficial to AEC professionals and the best software in the market for it. Today, most architects use computers to execute their projects and designs. But when CAD-based design tools first began in the 1980s, they were not as seamless as they are now. According to architect Keith Meniers, a fellow at CMI Designs, when CAD-generated designs first began in the early 1980s, it would often be a trial and error process. Meniers worked for General Motors and describes how he used CAD-based tools for density checks or the use of the computer to determine the load-bearing capacity of a material. For example, if Meniers were given a bamboo floor to construct, he would enter the data of his materials into the computer, following which it would generate design options. Meniers could then alter the materials, increasing and decreasing the density of the bamboo used to make note of his design options. The manipulation of these parameters would result in an optimized design, with less time spent in manually exploring all design possibilities. This generative nature of design possibilities was explored in depth by architects and engineers for the rest of the 20th century, leading into the 21st. Today, generative design software has progressed far beyond those initial steps. Designers today can input parameters such as materials, function and budget on a software like Revit and receive thousands of design iterations created by the computer in the blink of an eye. The designer can then pick the most optimized and appropriate design as per their project and make changes on it based on the client's requests. This doesn't reduce the role of the designer. Choosing the best option and customizing it is still dependent on human intelligence. Generative design just makes the process a whole lot easier. Some examples of generative design in the world today include Saha Hadid's extremely popular Heda Aliv Center and the Autodesk Technology Center in Toronto. While both generative design and parametric design involve the use of algorithms, Parametric design allows the designer to make their own designs through the input of parameters. They can adjust how the design looks and acts based on changing parameters. Generative design takes the input of materials and function from the designer and presents design possibilities. Currently, the most popular software for generative design is Fusion 360's generative design extensions and those of Notebox, Octopus and Orchistar. We hope this video gave you the insight you needed to begin your generative design journey. If it interests you, we suggest you check out One is to Access New Master Computational Design for Real World Applications course. Not only does it bring you on par with the latest developments in the AC world, it also accelerates your career and opens up the doors to Stockitech firms. Remember to like, follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more.